Hello, my name is James Cox, owner and master instructor of Premier Martial Arts in Abilene, Texas. We are America's self-protection, personal development, and fitness experts with something for everyone. It is truly my goal to guarantee that our students can become good at everything, from self-defense, physical fitness, to the positive life skills. The purpose of this video is to have a solid foundation of the more important fundamentals that all of our students should learn and hopefully one day master. We'll break down the different aspects of self-defense from styles of Kajikimbo and Krav Maga, kickboxing for fitness and fighting, Muay Thai and Western boxing, and overall grappling from Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and wrestling. We have two locations in the city of Abilene. Our main school is at 3287 South 14th off of Willis, and then Wiley, 6410 Buffalo Gap off of Antling. Self-defense. In this section, we're going to go over some of the most valuable self-protection techniques. There's so much information out there, and frankly, a lot of it just doesn't work. So what I want to give you is things that is more practical and effective for today, and still keep it simple. Of course, to begin with, train. You know, come to class and prepare. Have some sort of a plan so that you're a step ahead. Some self-defense is better than none. We're going to start with releases or escape. So in a situation where you're grabbed, you should never be taken, of course, so not move to a secondary location. Simple wrist releases could be very passive or they be could become very violent. We'll start with the same side wrist grab. To not be pulled, establish some balance. Be aware that the free hand could be the dangerous hand. What if it was a weapon? So maybe move off center, all right? The same side wrist grab works by going through the weakest part of his grip, which is the thumb and finger, the opening. If I go elbow against elbow, and at the same time pull my hand diagonally to the opposite shoulder, it is very difficult, if not impossible, for him to hang on. Even with a strong grip, the release works with elbow against elbow. You have the other hand either to strike with here. And then it's your combative follow-ups on whatever you know that you may do if necessary to the situation or just get away. So again, self-defense, wrist release number one, same side grab, elbow against elbow, pull your hand to the opposite shoulder, here. Number two will be the opposite side, so it's a diagonal grab this way. Same concept of balance, escaping through the thumb, I just want to bring my hand up and get towards the outside of the elbow, as if I'm waving to myself here. Hand comes up, strike and pull, as I push through. Pull the hand out. One, two. Number three is two hands on one. I'm going to go through the middle, over the top, grab your own fist, bend the elbow, and strut straight up towards the ceiling there. So over the top, grab, and escape. Four and five is hands held high or hands held low. There's so many options and situations and variations to this, but of course, move quick, get out of there, okay? If the hand's held high, I should relax so that the energy is not felt and there's an element of surprise. So relax, fingertips are first, and just go straight towards the ground as you use your leverage and your level change. Keep balance and posture and just escape. Opposite, if hands are held low, we go upward. You're always stronger with the knees bent, getting low and rooted into the ground. Hands held low, straight up, hands held high, straight down. And what needs to be done after, again, is drills that we have to work with combatives, hit with strong techniques to weak places. So let's go to a throat grab option. Not necessarily the chokes, but the strangulation type hold, even a collar or lapel grab. Hands are on me, around the throat, immediate habit should be to shrug. Chin down, shoulders up, so you have a, a, you know ability to breathe better. Stay away from the free hand, move offline. I'm just going to raise my hand, my bicep towards my ear, and wrap around as you step forward. Break the grip. Throat grab, shrug, raise, turn, and drop. One circular motion here, and then you're ready for whatever else. Next is a hair grab option. 
not everyone has the hair to grab, but hair grab, it could be, be a hoodie, a collar, or whatever else. But the methodology is to reverse what he's doing to you. Obviously, a hair grab hurts, so if the hair is being pulled, we want to push where the knuckles bend and just push and grind down. Two hands on one, push. Secondly, we go in the direction of the pull, which you probably wouldn't have a choice anyway when your head was yanked. So in the direction. We go closest weapon to closest target. This hand, palm heel strike to the groin, palm heel to the face, until there's no longer a threat. So the rule in a hair grab is to trap, go in the direction, and then attack. You keep pushing the hand down that's on your head. One, two, three. Next is any sort of headlock, which can be, you know, more dangerous as we start punching or weapons or whatever. But we'll just go with the side headlock from here, which is not necessarily a choke, but it's intimidating and uncomfortable. So shrug what you can with your chin down and shoulders up, create some space. Two on one, wrist control, just to release some pressure. Posture up so that you're not the one off balance. And we're going to wrap around with the inside hand, coming towards the back, same side. And find what you can grab. Hair, eyes, nose, throat, or simply just go across the jawline and bow and arrow, push and pull. Also have the knee to the back of his knee. It could be simple takedowns or just buckling. So one, two on one. Two, posture. Three, wrap around and split the grip here until you find whatever else you're going to do. Those are eight self-defense releases, which are common and important for you to try to, you know, master and develop and then get just more confidence with, with time and repetition. Let's finish our self-defense up with a couple of our, you know, favorite drills that we have at Premier. The Scarecrow drills is a good tribute to my original instructor, Patrick McDaniel. And the whole concept is to be accurate, have good focus to vital areas. It really teaches you how to flow your hands and let one move set up the next. And there's such a variety of different martial art techniques, different areas, things you probably wouldn't have ever thought of. Not to mention as well the discipline to memorize and perfect this skill. So scarecrow drill number one. There would actually be seven drills that walk the body and there's five moves to each drill. Scarecrow drill number one. Let's just go from a casual ready stance. We're working on this. Ready stance. First thing, of course, hands up, elbows in. We're going to step. Traditionally, it would be a front stance or Y stance. The feet are straight, back knee locked, front one bent. So left leg forward, step. Hands up. Now, rich hand, you can think like a clothesline, even similar to a hook. Thumb is tucked away. Rich hand can be thrown all kinds of directions. We're going to strike to the throat. Windpipe area. One hand is in. Look at my shoulders. Look at my weight into the ground. Strike. As one move comes in, the other one goes out. Push, pull, action, reaction. Positive, negative, chop. So concentrate all the energy to one point, and let's use this part of the chop, a little bit higher up the throat, maybe Adam's apple, so you go one, two. Three is a Kempo punch, short, vertical, knuckles up, close to your body, and just drop it here with the two knuckles. Three, Kempo punch. On the same line, four is gonna be a palm heel. All the energy forced to this side, to the back of the ear, push and pull. Think of a stiff jab, open-handed, four. Five, take a tiny step up, could grab or not, but this uppercut elbow, small finger side up, five, right under the chin. So the scarecrow drill number one, student stands like a scarecrow. They, all, they get to learn to get a little contact as we work on the accuracy of the vital areas. Okay, one, reach in, two, chop, three, kempo punch, four, palm heel, five, elbow. These also work with extensions of your body, knives and sticks, and uh, being able to do them on both sides and just, you know, have the discipline to get the drill perfected. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit faster. Why don't you guys drill scarecrow number one with each other? Rich hand, chop, kimpo, palm heel, elbow. Put everything where it goes, make a little contact. Good. Good. 
and break. Okay, turn around. Another set of drills that, that we uh, practice a lot at Premier is the grab arms. This is also a tribute to my Kajikimbo uh, Grandmaster Instructor Richard Peralta. And it's the Kajikimbo way of defending the grab, all right? So a grab, a lapel grab, a shoulder grip, whatever. The hands are on us. As the hands are on us, we're going to get balance. Bridge with the palms up and grab the triceps. So in one move like a curl. Ready? One, palms up. Right leg's going to be a front snap kick to the groin. So foot straight, toes back, use the ball of the foot, chamber up, out, in, drop right then and there in a horse stance, 45 degree. So you can see with the person, as he grabs, I want to control the grab. Palm up, grab the tricep. Close to my body, one move. So he grabs, I grab. Chamber, snap kick to the groin, drop in the horse stance. If the hands were still on me, there's many ways to break the grip. So think of an outward block, low block, swim through, strike, open. And then you have all kinds of strikes to follow up with, or just get away. The ad lib is your expression to the art that you can add, whatever. We start with the basic defense. One, two, three, break the grip. Grab art one. A little bit faster. But you guys drill grab art number one. Three doubles up, grab the tight step, snap kick, use the ball of the foot. Last move is always move, so back away and cover or prepare your ad lib follow ups. You've got to touch the cup, that way we know we're hitting the right spot. Oh, it's much bigger. There you go. <laughs> And break. Okay. Position up. That concludes the self-defense techniques. It's not just what you do and how you do it, but it's also how you understand it. The philosophies, concepts, the principles of the art are very important. As the students train through the years, they'll develop some of their own expressions and you know, uh, their ways and strategies and things that work better for them. So I'm going to ask Tommy to explain to you some of his overviews of self-defense, tips, pointers, important things to remember that could you know, save your life. Uh, some of the things I've learned over the years in self-defense, one is being aware. Always keeping your, heads up, your head up, your eyes forward, never looking down. In today's generation, with iPads and cell phones, it's easy to get distracted and not to be aware of your surroundings. And that's when most threats usually happen. One most important thing I can tell you is preserving yourself, always being ready to react. No matter what the situation is, if you're having to protect yourself or a family member, Know your, know your surroundings, know ways out surroundings, and most important of all, just be safe. Kickboxing. So in this section, we're going to go over some of the most important fundamentals of kickboxing. Starting with your basics and putting together a few uh, intelligent combinations. So if it's for fighting or for fitness, you know, a good kickboxing class, you could burn up to a thousand calories an hour and have a complete, you know, full body workout. The situation is going to start standing and it's going to start disconnected. So priority number one is a perfect fighting stance. Just go from a boxing stance, boxing stance, tight fist, hands held high, elbows in, chin down, shoulders up. Turn to the side so that you lead more with that left shoulder. Hips forward in a two-legged stance. Drop the weight to the center. Put the feet pretty much straight and parallel. And the heels come off the ground a little bit. The purpose of this stance is to maximize balance as you minimize targets. Hands, elbows, chin, shoulder to the side. And be ready to move, attack, defend. So we use the word mad. Move, attack, defend. Starting with basic footwork. So this is to never cross or get in the same line or too wide, but to be in the best position that supports your posture and your technique so you have the most power for everything that you're going to do. Foot drag, step drag, footwork going forward. The leg in front's closest, so it'd be left, right. So if I step drag forward, ready, move. Three inches with this foot, three with the right. Left, right. No difference retreating, creating space, getting backwards. So we want to avoid leading. Leaning one way or leaning the other. Posture is very important. So you're off balance when your nose is over your toes or when your head is over your heels. To maintain balance, we don't lean, we step if you can't reach. So moving forward is left, right, 
moving back is right left step drag same concepts going side to side not to cross the feet so if you move to the right right leg is first one two step drag left leg to the left one two that's basic footwork and of course we advance with you know rhythm exercises and level changes good head movement duck walking all kinds of different concepts of footwork so let's go over what we would say like our four fours or your three fours. Most important punches, we'll start with number one, jab. If you lead with speed, left hand, tight fist, thumb side is up, straight as can be, right down the middle at the very end, last inch, turn it over. Chin down, shoulder up, so you can see how my shoulder kind of punches myself in the jaw. Number one, jab, ready, one, 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 one. Good body movement, the right hand's in position, so good focus and good discipline of keeping their hands up. Number two punch is your right cross. This is the power so that we can engage the hip more. The only difference is it's not going to quite reach, so we make up for it with this rotation. Shoulder, hip, heel, as if you were going to throw a ball. Your number two cross, elbow stays in, lead with the hand, ready, and two. Straight out, bring it back in as quick as it went out. Ready, two, cross. And the other hand is ready, ready, two. Put them together, your jab cross series. One, two. One, two. One, two. Three is the left hook, so you're gonna twist and turn. So with the left hand here, think of the two knuckles first. A short hook, there's some variations in how we will teach the left hook, but we're gonna start basic. Palm side facing me, elbow up, and cut as you go with through with a circle. You can always come back with hammer fist, elbows, and keep the right hand ready in its position, not to over pivot. Shoulder, hip, heel. Again, my foot will turn. Fingers and toes basically doing the same thing. So left hook, ready, three. Come across, three, three. Perfect classic boxing combo together, the one, two, three series. Jab, cross, hook, move. One, two, three, move. And number four is the uppercut. Uppercut is very neutral, so they could be on either side, all right? The uppercut works when you sit down. So you're gonna bend the knees and keep your bottom down kind of low so that you're low to the ground. As you squat and split between the elbows or right uppercut, palm side is facing me and come up the middle and just create this pop. So my palm is now facing me. Right uppercut, you're ready for everything else. So ready, number four, right uppercut, move, move. The short punch has the element of surprise and good speed, focus, and power all together. Put the four punches together, so the one, two, three, four series, ready, move. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut, and move. Good. This is your basic four punches. Defense is minimal, okay? Less is best. It's action is faster than reaction, so we have to train to drill to stop these punches. So if Brandon was up here throwing his jab, his number one punch at me with good aim here, then I just want to use the same side and parry. So simple brush block where I move it away. Same hand on this side. So then I would be more to the side of taking his back here. Try to recognize the same sides of the body. So he throws his right cross. My parry is now on this side, is my left hand, and just brush inside here. So hands are up like you're clapping or swatting a fly away. Parry block, one, two. If the punch comes to the body, instead of sacrificing and dropping your hands, we use our block number two, which is the deflect. Think of like an inside defense martial arts inward block. I'm just going to quickly deflect right here. As you kind of hollow in and deflect. A cover block is a quick outside defense around here and with the sport of kickboxing, there's a glove. So as a hook punch comes, chin down, shoulder, Ever so slightly, change your level, advance forward, and just reach and grab the side of your head, nice and tight, not to have any gap where a glove would fit through there, but to really close. The hook comes, cover block. Same on the other side, cover, cover. The shield, the leg check, is a simple concept of stopping a leg kick. There's a lot of power of a roundhouse kick at the end. Uh, so to intercept it with the shield is to Bring the leg up, tighten your core as the elbows are in, and outside here. Kick comes, check. You're ready for your counters. There's inside shields and so many other variations, hollowing of defense. But we'll start with those basic four blocks. So hands up, we we'll go through the line with parries. We 
recover, we go flat, and we shield. Check the kick. Basic four blocks. Let's move to some kicking. We have several ways of kicking and many variations, jumping, spinning from the ground here or there, but the basics that are going to work the best. Your number one lead kick is like the foot jab, the teep kick or the leg that's in front pushing. Foot straight, toes back so that you're using the ball of the foot. Our number one meaning closest to the target, left leg front kick, four parts of the kick. First is the chamber, so fold the leg up, just get this direction of your tuck up, extend out, back in and down. This is our number one front kick. Ready and up, out, and down. Push with your hips, focus on the center line, and create a push. So your goal would be to get me off from you as you push, get forward. Ready and move, move. You can throw the rear leg, and there's many variations of the front kick. Secondly is a side kick. I really prefer the lead side kick, although you can throw the rear, and we can spin and jump and do variations. But the side kick, we're going to take the right foot as a pivoting foot and point it away. So pivot this way. Left hand sets up really good off a double jab. A double jab would set up a lead side kick, but let's throw the left leg side kick chamber up underneath yourself here. So get this fold. The blade of the heel is what you're stomping with. Toes should be facing me, out, in, and down. Same concept, the four parts of a side kick, up, out, in, down. Ready, and lead side kick, move, move. So again, the timing is everything. As he finds the speed, the focus, the power, and he times me coming in with that side kick. It's a great stopper. Number three kick we're gonna throw is our round kick. So again, variations on how we could do it, but the Muay Thai rear leg kick, we're gonna look for the nerves. The weakest point is in the center, between the knee and the hip, right here. The outside leg tends to come higher and then drop down, so at this angle. So on the roundhouse kick, I would lift my knee, point the toes, use the shin, and drive through. So some variations on how we would throw the round kick. We can throw more like traditional karate, more like sport fighting, and then of course like kickboxing, depending on where you're kicking. If you point the toes and use the instep, I'm just going to snap here. That would be the round kick this way. If I use the ball of the foot, we use more in self-defense. You just learn to curl this way. But we're going to use the shin. So if I go to the nerves here, the leg kick, lift the knee up, turn around, and drop down. As if a sword is cutting all the way through. Okay? If there's nothing in the air, we can do a 360 round kick to get that rotation force. We're going to rotate all the way around, 360, move, lift, kick, and be ready to shield. Okay, and move. Right, first turn. Move. Good. Fourth basic kick is a back kick. A little bit more time that you would need to master the back kick. Uh, even from behind you, knees coming in. So from the center, just come up, use the heel. And where you'll see a back kick mostly is with the turn. Spinning back kick, another good technique after double jab smart head movement. So relax, you're in the kickboxing mode, spinning back kick, turning back. Left leg can do half of the work, so you swing the gate. Open it up and just spin. Heels are now this way. Knees together, look over the shoulder you're gonna kick with. Up, out, in, down, and then turn. One, open the leg, go ahead. Turn, look over your shoulder, back kick. You may end up south or in the left-handed stance, but no big deal, we will add combinations. Spinning back kick, ready, and move. Good, reset, and move. And those would be your four basic kicks. So we're putting things together, of course, sparring. Bag work and light sparring is important, not only to learn how to hit and get hit a little bit, but to get the conditioning and deal with the whole concept of unpredictability. You never know what happens in a fight, and you never know when your self-defense turns to fighting. So this is what you need. We're going to go over our first two combos, which are the picks. Pick number one, everything that I can do to create the opposite, to generate the most amount of power, and to set the technique up so that it's just a more surprise that works, okay? So I'm going to throw my left jab. It's a straight punch. It's high. It's this direction. Either I hit them or I occupy the thoughts to get the tension up high where I want it to set up the right round kick down low. Straight punch, round kick. Pick number one, jab, round kick. You can drill it. You guys try with each other, pick number one. 
Move a little bit of footwork. Sparring drill. Hands up, elbows in, breathe on the punch. And the same spot every time. Move that shin and cut down. Good, break. So pick number two, meaning two punches. You're gonna throw your jab cross, your one, two. Opposite of this, the last punch thrown is gonna be the left leg that we would kick with. We're gonna throw it as a round kick. A few ways, you could just throw a real quick round kick, almost like a sweep. You can add a step, but our favorite is with the switch. The switch is a way to make the front leg become the back leg, to generate power, and to have an illusion that you're gonna do something on this side. So you basically hop, switch. Left leg comes back, and you turn that to the round kick. The Muay Thai rear kick with the left leg coming up is more of this angle. Using the shin, it's a great kick to the leg, as well as to the liver, right here under that side of the rib. And we have the flexibility, an excellent kick to the neck with the shin. So pick number two is the jab cross. One, two. The switch round kick is switch, kick. Reset to your stance. So let's try. Pick number two. One, two. Switch round kick. One, two. Yeah, get these windshield wipers, we call it, working. You got to drill pick two on each other. Go. Jab cross, switch round kick. Go to the leg, the body, or the head. Last move is move. Good fighting stance. And three. Good. Feet together set. That concludes what I feel is most important for you to really master for your kickboxing technique. If there was something to add to that, spend some time on a bag or with focus mitts with a good coach and just get burnout. You know, learn to let your hands go. It's a lot harder than what you think just to punch straight, nonstop, hard, fast, and strong for 30 seconds. To get on a bag and ah, punch it out. But that is something that is very helpful for your cardio and learning how to control the heart rate a little bit better. Feet together set. With your kickbox, and of course, take the basics, put together smart combinations, back work, sparring, have fun with it. It's a sport after all, but it can be self-defense or fighting. Um, with kickboxing, there's a lot of strategies and things that work different for certain people in certain situations. It's important to understand strategies from high to low to movement and, and, and what works. And if it's working, keep doing it. It's when it's not working is then you change it up and try something you know different in the real situation. Passing down my knowledge to the students that I teach, I want them to understand what they do and to be able to articulate it and put it in words and expressions that can help everyone understand. So I'm going to put Brandon on the spot and explain, in his opinion, some overviews, thoughts, and tips and pointers that make kickboxing work. Well, important things to remember in kickboxing would, be, have, to, would have to be the basics. So having that good stance, that good foundation, using your hip movement to get all the power and having that nice tight fist so you don't hurt your hands or anything and also having that timing you don't want to block too late you don't want to punch too early or anything so you have to have that timing and then always keep and remember all the basics of the kickboxing grappling a generic term for the different forms of judo brazilian jiu-jitsu and wrestling for when and if a situation goes to the ground, it's important to be prepared, to have trained, to have a plan, and then again, a step above. So what happens with this whole concept of falling and coming up like a fighter? These are great drills for exercise as far as warm-up that we use, but very functional for, again, going to your back and coming back up. You want to be quick with it. you got to think like a basketball. It bounces and comes right back up. So when you're in your fighting stance, hands up and elbows in, of course, priority would be to try to keep this fight standing. That's why we want to master our striking. But when and if and it doesn't, we go to the ground, well, how about we start off with break falls. So for our judo, we're going to do a series of break falls so that we can take each other down over and over and not get hurt. Not to mention, on the street, there's no mats, there may be multiple parties, and there's weapons. So basic back fall. When you have no choice but to fall, then we want to minimize the injury, and we have to create where there's no edges, so we become rounded. Chin is on your chest, the body is curved as you tuck, so basically squat, hands come in, and you're going to sit. We're going to start with the basic concept where we're going to roll. When the center of my back touches from this point, then the two hands come out. The harder you hit the ground with your hands, the softer everything else will hit. Keep your chin tucked. One. 
we break fall. Let's see our back fall. Ready, and one. From this position, we're going to shrimp. We're going to hip lift. We're going to escape, create some space. So bring the feet close to the bottom. Lift so you bridge high and pull through to one side. The concept of the shrimp. Number three is to protect. So quickly get the knee and elbow together. I would like to keep the person at bay at the end of my feet so that I can kick, sweep, or pull guard. From here next, to work on standing correctly, we posture. So from elbow to hand, feet close. So posture. And then thread the needle or stand like the fighter. Bring this leg up, lift, thread through the middle. Ready? Stand. Quickest way to be in your fighting stance and then attack. So the six step process of falling and coming up. Ready? Fighting stance goes like this. One, fall. Two, shrimp. Three, protect. Four, sit up. Five, stand up. And six, attack. Ready, full speed, and go. Excellent. So you can see with an opponent, takedowns, I really like trips. They're practical, and this is just the concept of clinching, pushing, pulling, and turning, and getting good wraparounds, inside, outside, through, around. And we'll get into more advanced throws and takedowns. But in this concept, even off a bully push, or an off-balance slip. He takes me down, fall, shrimp, protect, sit up, stand up, attack. We switch. That's the concept of falling and coming up like a fighter. Thank you. Let's look at the sprawl concept, which is really takedown defense in general. This is legendary, it's practical, it works, and it's a four-step procedure to know and understand. Step number one, take down the fence, is get distant. Back pedal, so pull, step drag, right foot as you hollow in and get out of the way. If I'm reaching forward for knees, hips, ankles, or I just know what I'm doing, or maybe going off adrenaline, rage, and looking to tackle you. Ready, fighting stance, and one, distance. Next, if the person passes the distance, is your level. So you get a little sumo on them. You drop your weight, then and there, use your breath, in a two-legged stance, hips forward, sink in the middle. The T-Rex, forearms, short arms to kind of post and just stop them in their tracks. Two, level change. Three is where we sprawl, and there are so many variations, but to take the, sh the hips, the knees, the ankles, and get them out of the way. So as they go up here, hips to the ground, ready, and sprawl. Last, we'll be pushing their head in another direction. And where the head goes, the body follows. And then we come back up and we're ready. So up, your version of your sprawl, the four steps, ready, go distance, level, hips, head, and back up. Ready, and sprawl. Good, as you see with the person coming forward, same concepts, distance, Level, hit, push the head. We get good on getting an underhook, like punching an uppercut as he comes forward again. Underhook, or cross face, push the head, but don't give him what he's looking to get, which is the leg. So a simple sprawl is just to get out of the way here. Be ready to attack. There's the person knows what he's doing and he reaches for a really good double leg, full speed to take you down. There's your basic problem. Thank you. So if you can't keep the situation standing and you go to the ground, or maybe it's your choice to go to the ground, my priority next is to quickly scramble for a top position. Dominate side control, knee on belly, full mount, for strikes, for submissions, or just controlling the person so that they can't hurt you. Knowing how to adjust your weight heavy, center everything, and just a, a lot about maintaining your balance, but taking his away, you know, knowing where your hips are, knowing where his hips are. So we, now we're on the ground. The situation where we're on the ground, then we're gonna quickly scramble for a top position, side control or side mount. Instead of the body being posture, we like to jackknife it a little bit and get closer to the, towards the head. Obviously, if we can, we'll wrap the arm up. Feet together, knees apart, get close and heavy. Drop all your weight on him. Your weight has to be somewhere. I do like to have an underhook on this side, underneath the arm, 
cross face here, gable grip palm to palm, and a little shoulder pressure as you sink all your weight and keep your head down. Side control. One of our favorite submissions, very high percentage finish, is the Americana or the key lock, the shoulder lock, which works off this 90 degree angle here or within. Now if I keep the wrist down and the elbow up and wrench in this direction, this is where you manipulate and basically would have a shoulder break. We respect in the sport as we tap the person and obviously let go as soon as you get the tap. So you can go across and use your head as well. Find your grip, five fingers against the elbow, against the head, five fingers under and over. As I wrench in, circle around towards the hip. This is the shoulder lock. One, two. To improve the position, we go to knee on belly or knee ride, which I'll show you with space here. I don't want to be as friendly to my classmate. I can put the knee on the sternum and the foot up here, which sets up strikes and gives you the ability to take arm here, knee ride. Foot's away, post it here, I'm going into full mount. I would like for my mount to be higher as he would like for me to be lower, so he makes shoulder walk, and now I'm more affected by his hip lift. Feet together, knees in, full mount, or great find it for the airplane mount. Very important for this person to have be great at the hip lift escape, the trap and roll. Trap and roll works by taking an arm away, and I can't post, and a leg as well, both on the same side, lifting high, straight up, turning, and then there's the reversal. I should be quick to close guard, higher, feet together, knees cross, or feet cross, knees in, and offset his balance be ready to sweep or submit. His main goal is to break this guard open and pass. Knee up the middle, hip down, elbows in, break, cross knee pass. And now he's in his side control. So let's start back in this position. Bryce is gonna go through this entire flow drill as well. And then we would add one more submission, which is Another very high percentage finish, which is the front choke, the guillotine choke from the closed guard. So if you start in side control. Americana. Knee on belly. Full mount. High trap and roll. Good arm. Leg. Ridge high. Row. I should look to posture and pass as he's looking to sweep or submit. The guillotine from here. Let's do the guillotine again. You can see we have a saying of space is away, so we gotta get really close as he scoops, sits up the cross face, connects to the skin, over and under. Thumb side is up as he grabs the wrist. Leans back and lifts the hips, closes the guard again. That's the hips. The knee in the middle pass, hips down, elbows in, knee in the middle, back away. And a scoop, a scoop here, cross, and back to where we were. This is positional control with two uh, very great submissions. An awesome drill to learn and uh, develop. 
So with everything that we do, there are always some key points that are just very valuable that you want to try to instill and master and understand. These tips and pointers are the overview for whatever aspect of martial arts that we're doing. We want to anchor things in, say it and do it so that it just becomes part of you and your flow. As well as everything else that we do in grappling. I want Bryce to give you the overall tips and overview and, and what makes it important. What should these students not forget? Okay. Well, especially when it comes to something like grappling, there is a lot to keep in mind. But I'd say for any beginner, there's three major things. Number one is we need to relax. Both judo and jujitsu can be translated to the gentle way or the gentle art, which means we need the ability to relax and flow to manipulate our opponent's weight or strength against them. Uh, second, I would definitely say is our hips. Uh, our hips and our opponents. We need to be controlling our opponent's hips to make sure they can't take us down or go where they want to go. Second, we need to make sure our hips are free so that we can go where we want to move. Like the side control, knee on belly, and mount transitions. We have to have our hips free to do that. Uh, and third is our grips. We never want to be wasting what we're doing with our hands or our feet. We always need to make sure we're using all our limbs to be as effective as possible. So as soon as they break a grip, make a new one on any of the points of leverage like the head, elbow, wrist, or ankle. That would probably be my three biggest bits of advice for any beginner grappler. Excellent. In conclusion, first I want to congratulate you guys for taking the time and putting the effort to learn good quality mixed martial arts, to improve yourself as well as others. The whole purpose of this video, again, is to give you things that is valuable that you can learn, maintain, and that we're going to continue to do in our schools of premier martial arts. What is, what is more effective and important in kickboxing? in self-defense, and in grappling. If there was another aspect that I would touch base on, it's your overall physical fitness. Complete physical fitness should be a combination of good cardio exercises, the functional cardio exercises. If you're running and jumping rope or shadow fighting, doing burpees, whatever it may be, you can keep that heart rate up and build your cardio. Second is strength and conditioning. Functional strength and conditioning, weight training, as well as just punching, resistance training, push-ups, and the things that you can do to just tone the body where it is a stronger weapon as well. Flexibility, getting from point A to point B, range of motion. So that's why we stretch not only to have less injuries, be more durable, but flexibility is a great thing to have, uh, especially when it comes to the kicking and submission defense as well. Besides cardio strength and flexibility, what are you putting in your body? You know, common sense of, you know, uh, of avoiding alcohol and drugs and then common sense of water intake and you know I like a high protein low carb different things work for different people but proper nutrition and diet goes a long ways with what you do as well I'm going to ask Mr. Austin to tell you some concepts in his belief in uh, fitness overall as well. well like the professor was saying fitness is important in martial arts because martial arts is a lifestyle part of that lifestyle is how you live your life whether it be with what you're eating what you're doing outside of martial arts and what you're doing in martial arts. If you're not giving 100% when you're in martial arts, you're working out, you're training, and you're not giving 100% in your diet, your fitness, and your workouts outside of it, you're really not going to see the full package of martial arts. So you have to live, breathe, and eat. Literally, live martial arts, breathe, and eat food. With the three types that the professor was saying about fitness, you have your strength and conditioning. If you're doing strength and conditioning where you're lifting weights, you're building muscles, getting stronger, but you're not practicing your stretches, you're not building flexibility, then you lack one full part of what it means to be fit. Then you're not able to use that strength, you're not able to use that muscle. So just doing strength and conditioning isn't enough. You have to add on top of that flexibility, you have to add on top of stretches. You have to be able to have that flexibility to have functioning muscles. Same with if you do stretching and you do muscle conditioning, but you don't have cardio, then you're not going to be able to use that muscle effectively. If you have to defend yourself, you're going to gas out within 10 seconds, and then who knows what's going to happen after that. It's scary to think about it. You need to be able to use all three forms of fitness effectively. So I just want to finish with, uh, of course, I've been blessed to have excellent instructors and having good instructors and been teaching for my whole life. So over 30 years now, this is all I've done full time with martial arts and you know to develop good students that I'm proud of like these four and all of the other thousands and thousands of you know students and, and the, the, the black belts that we've created as well. Our philosophy is to build a better community one black belt at a time. I believe you can do and have and become anything. Of course, just putting your mind and your body together, putting your heart and soul behind what you do. So continue your martial arts training and let us know how we can help you. Feet together, set, bow.